Hi, this is Steven Estelle, the Applications Engineer with Rapid Scan 3D. And today I'm going to show you the 3D scanner called the C500 by Solution X. So currently we're going to connect our 3D scanner to the computer by plugging it into the USB, as well as turning on the three switches that are on the back of the machine. There's one switch behind the head, there's one switch at the bottom of the stand, as well as the third switch, which is under the turntable. So once all three of those switches are turned on, we're going to hit the connect button in the software and then it's going to connect to the machine successfully. So right now it's rotating the turntable and it's moving it to its initial position to make sure it's lined up perfectly with the 3D scanner. So after the connection is done, the scanner needs to warm up. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, it says the scanner is warming up and it's at 3%. So before you do any form of calibration, you must make sure that the scanner is warmed up to make sure everything is calibrated accurately and precisely. So in the meantime, what we're going to do while the scanner is warming up, we're going to set up the calibration plate, which involves putting down some three screws and then putting the calibration plate on top of those screws. Now that the scanner is warmed up, we can now proceed to the calibration process. So we have the plate on our turntable, and now you must select which calibration option you want to do, as well as the panel file. So because we're using a medium sized lens, we're going to do the medium sized panel file and select start. And then the calibration progress is automatic, and the whole process is done for you. So now that the calibration was completed successfully, we can now start 3D scanning of the object that we're going to do. So first thing we're going to need to do is take off the calibration plate. And then once the plate is taken off, we're going to start the scanning. So in today's project, we're going to scan a T-tube. What the process is going to involve is scanning two sides of the T-tube so that we can get the top and bottom of the entire tube and then creating an STL out of that tube so that we can import it to other softwares that we may need to utilize it in. What's helpful is that with the scan data, we can use it for reverse engineering, we could use it for modifying, we could use it for inspection. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different key tools and utilizations you could use this scanner for. Here's the T-tube that we're going to be working with. And what we're utilizing is an earthquake resistant hoodie that we put at the bottom of the T-tube to hold it onto the turntable platform. So when it is turning and shifting around, we don't have to worry about our device knocking over our item that we're trying to scan. So we're gonna to go to the scan tab. We wanna make sure that the exposure is set correctly. So what you could do is you could double click on the image and it'll set the exposure to that area you clicked on or you can manually adjust the exposure, or you can just do the auto exposure, and it'll change the brightness to fit the perfect exposure for the item you're working with. For scanning, you can do the auto scan, which just follows a path. You can do the smart scan plus 10, or the one plus, which does 10 plus scans, or one plus scan of areas you didn't reach when you did your scan. You can change the views. You can turn on the laser to see where the the lasers are intersecting at, you can change the path, as well as you can set the scan to, to work at different markers if you need to utilize markers for your item. So we're just going to utilize the auto scan and it's going to go through a path, preset, and it's going to start scanning our item on the table. So when the item is being scanned, you're able to move around the scan data and view the scan data as it's being auto-aligned to each other 
all at the same time. It's really neat that the scan process is pretty automatic, so you don't have to worry about picking up the scan or picking up the scan item, changing it around. It all just happens automatically on the turntable. On the left side in the model tree, you can see all the different data scans that's collected, as well as in the property, you can see all the different information, such as the vertices, as well as the polygon count. So in this scan, we did not completely get the back of the T-tube. So if I wanted to, I could do the 10 plus or the 1 plus, which does more scans in the view that were captured. However, because I'm going to be flipping the T-tube over and doing another scan of the other side, I won't need to do those 10 plus or 1 plus scans because it'll be captured in the next scan that I do. So right now I'm going to remove the T-tube, take off the sticky tack, and then flip the T-tube and redo the process to get the other side of the uh, T-tube. So as we apply the sticky tack, we're just going to put it back onto the plate. We're going to set the auto brightness and then we're going to do another auto scan. And then you'll start seeing the two different scans overlap each other. So group two is not going to be auto aligned with group one. So now that our group two is finished, we're done with the scanning part. And what you could do is you could view each group separately to look at the data that was captured in one group versus the data that was captured in the other group. So group two successfully captured a lot of data on the back of the T-tube, which is really good because we missed that data in the group one scan route. So now that we're done with scanning, we're gonna go into the alignment process. So for the alignment process, we're going to utilize the different groups that we have and we're going to put them together. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to set one group to the moving and then you're going to set the other group to the fixed. And once they're set in the different sections, you're going to pick three points from each different scan group, which will manually align the groups together. And then once they're aligned, you'll hit apply and then they'll be perfectly aligned with each other. If you had if you had more groups to align, after you apply, you'll put another group into the refine section, manually align that group to the previous group you aligned already. And then from there, you'll keep doing it until all your scans are aligned together to create the perfect results you were looking for. You'll be able to determine which which scan group is in different is in which one the moving or the fix by looking at the colors when they show up in the results preview. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to drag group one down to the fixed, and then we're going to have group two in the moving window. So in the resulting preview, the white tube is group one, and the blue tube. Is group two. So first I'm going to want to line them up. So I'm going to look at the numbers, the three over four, and I'm using that to help line them up perfectly so that I know the top is the top for both the T-tubes. So I'm going to use the tip of the four as one marker. I'm going to use part of that M that was captured in both scan data as a second.
and then I'm going to use part of the front of the tube as the third marker. So now that they're aligned from those three points, when you hit close, it'll ask, would you like to apply these changes? And you hit yes. And now you have your scans perfectly aligned with each other. So now what you want to do is do a global alignment. And after that, you want to go into the merge process. So I'm just going to keep mine on the high definition and optimize the mesh if I wanted to. And then you can do create wire type or do other things that you need, whichever fits your desires. So as you would believe, as you change the resolution from standard definition to high definition to ultra high definition, the processing time definitely changes drastically. So if you really wanted an ultra high definition merge, the process to get that done would be much, much longer than the standard definition merging. So now that the merge is completed, you have a perfectly merged data set of all the different scans put together. So now when you click on the data set from all the merged entities, you're able to go to the different options, such as decimate, which is lowering the percent of the polygons. Currently we're at about 2,700,000 polygons. And if you needed to compress it to a smaller number of polygons, you can change that percentage. If you want to, you can smooth out to different levels. You can delete small clusters based off of the vertices in the clusters. Or another option is to just highlight it and then hit the delete key to remove that section of the scan data that you do not want. Another option is shrinking the boundaries to different levels, as well as, well as reverse normals and fill holes. So when you fill holes, you'll first click find and it'll locate all the holes in the scan data. This typically happens if you don't make it watertight. And then from there, you will click on a hole and then you'll select fill and then apply and it'll fill the hole for you. After that's all done, you can look at all the different properties to make sure that it fits different requirements for the software you might export it to. And then we hit export. You can go into the folder that you want to save it into and select the save as type. So you can save as OBJ, STL, PLY, ASC, or the Easy Scan project file. So you, that, so you can come back to it and edit some more if you need to later on. So, and then after all those different processes are done, you're left with the scan data that you receive from the C500 scanner. As you can see, it has a ton of detail in the scan data. We have about 1.4 million vertices and more than 2 million polygons. So this is a ton of data that I know some softwares that if not handled correctly may not be able to take all this data inside of it. It gives you a lot of accuracy when working with things such as inspection or reverse engineering to know that your product's gonna be well. And it's a really powerful scanner that allows you to receive almost perfect data collection. So that was the main preview of the C500 3D scanner. This is Steven Estelle, the applications engineer with Rapid Scan 3D. And if you want any questions answered, feel free to contact us. And thanks for watching.